Good morning again, brothers and sisters. As we return to our study, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for His guidance and His direction as we open His Word and look to learn from the symbols that He has presented for our edification. Gracious Father in Heaven, we thank You for this time that we have been able to spend together. We thank You, Father, for the various symbols for the very evidences that we have of your soon approach and of the return of your Son. Bless us, Father, as we open your word. We seek your guidance. We seek your direction. We ask for wisdom that we may rightly divide the word of truth. Help us now. Show us that that you would have us to understand. May your will be done. May your character be glorified. Direct us now. Bless us. Please send your angels. And allow your spirit to open our minds. For this we ask. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> We're going to do a little bit of a recap. On the board before you are some of the symbols and the information that we had been addressing at the outset of these meetings. Now, one point that we need to look at very carefully here, we have the symbols of November 9th, 191, and September 11th. I know for myself that I remember exactly where I was on September 11, 2001. I remember everything that was occurring for me that day. And all of these things have had a major import in my life. Now, when we are seeing these symbols, November 9th, September 11th, and this other iteration of 191, we are dealing with the same symbol over and over and over again. Now, as we, were, as we were addressing at the outset of this meeting, when we are looking at Daniel 8.13, when we are considering Daniel 8.13, we find that there is much that we had not considered before. The light that is being opened unto us at this point is huge. Daniel 8.13, if you'll turn in your Bibles, we will read this again. We're going to cover this and we're going to establish this basis. So if you will turn in your Bibles to Daniel 8.13, we will again see what the Lord has to say to us. If you would, let me know when you have this open and when you are ready by saying amen. amen. Okay? Daniel 8.13 reads, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, this portion, as we addressed, I, then I heard the wonderful numberer speaking. And another said, saint said unto the wonderful numberer which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of, of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. So, if we are hearing the words of the wonderful numberer, if we are hearing the words of the Almighty God, are we not hearing the words of His Son? And those are words of life. Amen? Amen. So here we are. 
if we remove the word sacrifice from this understanding, as we are told, this word was a supplied word by the translators. If we read the front of our King James Bibles, we are told that anything that is italicized is provided. Now, this one word, we, are, we have been informed, is the only provided word that should not be in Scripture. So here we have the daily and the transgression of desolation. In looking this back over, Hiram Edson presented for us the evidence that this period of the daily domination, which is paganism, and this domination which is papalism, runs for 2,520 years from 723 to 1798. We can truly divide this period based upon what we have learned from these charts because here is 538 when the daily is taken away when papal supremacy supremacy becomes the ruling key in the world. Now, in Daniel 8.14, we read, And he, the wonderful numberer, said unto me, Unto 2,300 evening morning. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now if we accept this, rather than the English word days, we have something that is being presented for our understanding as a prophecy. Now as we walked through this before, here... We have this beginning in 457 B.C. We can affix this in 457 because this is when Ezra came and returned to Jerusalem with the third decree of Artaxerxes. As we are told in Daniel 9, Open with me, Daniel 9, verse 20. Daniel is praying. And what kind of a prayer has he been giving to this point? Is he not confessing his sins and the sins of his people? He's putting himself with the children of Israel. Daniel was a righteous man, but he was seeing that his guilt was just as bad as the rest of the children of Israel. And whilst I was praying, while the, whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. What vision are we talking about? Here again. If, we're, if we come back to Daniel 8, 
And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Therefore, excuse me? Okay. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. This is the vision of the evening and the morning. The vision of the evening and the morning is true. Therefore, shut thou up the vision of the daily and the transgression of desolation, for it shall yet be for many days. In this, we must divide the word of truth so that we may better understand that which is being presented. Here we have the vision that is true. It begins in 457. It ends in 1844. Now we are going to look. We're going to take a look very directly at all of this. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall the, that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Here we have seven weeks. Here we have... Three score and two weeks. And here we have one week. There are your 70 weeks of Daniel 9. Now as we look at this very directly, the first seven weeks are showing us the cycle of allowing the land to rest. 49 years. Here we have 434, the 62 weeks. Now, in this 62 weeks, when we are doing basic math, we are able to divide this. Now, as I stated in the meeting when this was first presented, the understanding of this center point had come from Brother Stephen. Here we have the year. 191 B.C. Do we have 191 here as we addressed it at the outset? Are we not again showing something very similar to 9-11? When we divide this, when we are looking at this, we have this figure presenting us now with two figures of 217. What does 217 mean to us? July 21st. 217. That's Rafia. Raphia and midnight. Why is it important that we note it as midnight? Because on July 21st, 1844, Israel at Boston, Israel, someone's not with the midnight with the midnight cry. We have midnight prior to the midnight cry. So we have a waymark. 
we have a waymark that identifies for us that the midnight cry is about to commence. Does that make sense? Now, when did the midnight cry occur? Exactly. Now we're going to write it in this way. 15, 8. Or 1, 5, 8. Is 1, 5, 8 one of the numbers that I placed on the board at the end of last meeting? Yes. Now, it is important for us to understand the symbol then for the midnight cry. Because as I will soon show, 158, the symbol for the midnight cry, is also the symbol for a league or for a covenant. Does that make sense? Can you accept that? Very much. So here... We have 217. We have midnight being shown to us in the vision that is true. And what does Sister White say about the vision that is true? Foundation, central pillar. It is the foundation and the central pillar of Adventism. Correct? Yet, there are many, and have been many in the church, that say there is no basis in understanding the Hebrew language for this to be interpreted the way that it is. Yet, this foundation, which has existed since the vision was presented by, to Daniel, can be affixed historically multiple ways to show us the reason for our faith. Now, in 408, we have this period where the land was allowed to rest. We have the streets and the walls being rebuilt. 91 years later, to 317, we see a historical link to what we're talking about. Because at this point, now can this be seen well enough? Can, can you that are, are, are watching on the internet, can you see that what I'm pointing to? Here. In three... Oh, very clear? It is not very... It's very clear. Okay. Yeah. Not very clear. I, can, I can see it well now. Okay. I can see it partially before. Depends on their connection. Okay. Here we have a period of 91 years. In 317 BC, Ptolemy the first Soter, Ptolemy, quote, the Savior. Who is married, who has children, and his wife, his queen, has a new lady-in-waiting that was her mother's relative. But this king decides, oh, if I've got one, one queen, I need to have a second. Now, is that the type of covenant relationship that we should engage in? God ordained a covenant relationship to be between one man and one woman. So here we have a league in 317 that is being formed. We are given another example of a league that is not proper. 
after this league, we now, with our midpoint, have two periods of 126 years. Here in 191, Rome defeats Greece at Thermopylae. Thermopylae was the site of many battles. But this is important for us to note because this begins the time of the end for the, Greece, for the Grecian Empire. This here is midnight for Greece. But on the other side, we must pay attention because this midnight is the beginning of the day for Rome. But where we have two periods of 126, we also have one period of 252. And whenever we can do this, where there is one-tenth of the figure, we have an example of the figure. Just like here, we have one-tenth of a figure here, yet our entire figure continues. Right? So chiastically, we have a period of 91 years. We have the 2126 or 1252, and we have another period of 91 years of another improper league where Rome now takes control of Syria. Now, all of these are contained within the vision that is true. If something is true, can we trust it? Can we have faith in the way that Christ is leading us in this vision? Do we need to doubt it? Should we set it aside? Now, We are dealing with other symbols. We are dealing here with a time period that shows us multiple symbols coming together. Multiple symbols joined together. Is that important for us to note? Should this tell us something about how important of a symbol that we're viewing right now? How did we establish the dates from history? How did we find this? Is this something that we just dreamed up? Is this an application that we're making on our own? This is all from the study of chronology. This is all taking history as the pioneers did to look to see how historic events are related to the prophecies in the Bible. Now, did this bring faith to the pioneers? Did this show them that God was in charge? What do you say? Okay. Now, do we have any questions about what's on this board? Do we have any comments about what's on here right now? I'm opening this up to, to everybody that is viewing this here and that's viewing it wherever you are. So feel free to make comments.
Now, Okay, there were a lot of things that Brother Dewey had shared that we needed and they were at times rain in due season. Now he is now passed on. We are going to take a quick look at multiple things that many of the pioneers had studied because we need to apply what they did to our time now. <clears throat> Have we established that 158 is the symbol of a league or a covenant to your satisfaction? Have we addressed that 220, when we see 220, that this is a symbol of restoration. Does that make sense to you? Yes or no? It does. It does. It's done. It's done. Okay. Now I'm, I'm going to show you something in a combination of symbols. Consider this for a few minutes. What year was the King James Bible published? 1611. 1611. Now, in what year did Father Miller begin his efforts in presenting the Word of God? 1831. 1831. Now, is it easy to see that from here to here you have a period of 220 years? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, I get asked questions from time to time. I believe in using the King James Version of the Bible. But I am using a version that many have had opportunity to have access to because it is the version from which all current King James Bibles are drawn from because it's the version that corrected many of the grammatical mistakes that existed in the 1611 Bible. The version that I'm using is the 1769 Oxford Revised King James. So I look at this And that version of the Bible was published 158 years after the original King James. So here I have in this small example two symbols that are combined. Is not our Heavenly Father telling us that not only He desires a league with us, but he desires to be restored and wants us to be restored to him. Is this not a powerful example as to why the King James Bible 
is necessary for us <clears throat> when we seek to understand doctrine. Any thought or question? Now, four hundred and ninety. We have four hundred and ninety here on the charts. When I walk over, and I know this is going to be hard to see, but 490 is also on the 1850 chart. When we look at this with 490, we are seeing things that are receiving a time of probation. We may also see things that are being set up. In the Bible, 490 years is necessary for us to understand. It is necessary for us to be aware of. What was the year where Saul, son of Kish, was anointed as king of Israel. 1097 BC. 1097 BC. Yet the monarchy and the people went into captivity in 607. under which we see a period of 490 years. Why did they go into captivity? The land didn't rest every seventh year. Okay. No rest for the land. Four hundred and ninety years, the children of Israel did not follow the commandments of God. For four hundred and ninety years, they did not obey the covenant. Where do we find the instructions to allow the land to rest? Where in the Bible do we see this? Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25. Really? Is that? Verse 2. Okay. Where else? It's Brothers and sisters... Consider this. Turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus 23, 10, and 11. The instructions in Leviticus are given to the Levites, right? Are we not the Levites today? Are we not the ones that are to be teaching the word so that others may also teach? We've stated through this week that Exodus 20 to 23 is the covenant with God, given at Sinai. 
Exodus 23, verses 10 and 11. And six years thou shalt sow thy land, and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard. First mention is in the covenant with the people. This instruction was given to all the people, not just for the Levites. This instruction was given to all of Israel in the day they stood at Sinai. This was part of the covenant that God sought to make with his people. Now, here, after, I believe, I believe it was established that the crossing of the Jordan occurred in what year? 1493. So, when we're looking at this, And we're going from 1493 to 1097. We have this period of 396 years. But we also have a period of 436 years from the time that they came out of Egypt. This instruction was part and parcel of the covenant that God gave to his people. Yet this instruction, when they sought a king, was one of the first things that they set aside. Now, Here again, we're going to look at another 490. When was Solomon's temple erected? Well, it began on uh, 1013. On ten th in 1013. B.C. Okay. It took seven years. It so what? It took, took seven years. Finished in 1006. Okay. Or, or sorry, yeah, 1006. Yeah, 1006. And then when was the temple construction completed after the return from captivity? Well, in the, the year... Um, the Jewish year of 516 B.C. It, it's going to be dedicated at the end of that year, which puts it in 515. But if you just take the whole years, just put 516. You don't need to okay. put the 15. So is this also not a period of 490 years? Mm -hmm. And it so, lay in ruins for 70 years, too. Right. But here, we have the land resting because they did not wish to follow and they were given a time of probation for 490 years. Here, the temple had 490 years. Now, a third that we are going to look at And we've covered it several times. We 
was this period not 490 years for Daniel's people? Here we have three periods of 490. Three periods that there are warning that is being given. Here the temple was finished and finished. Without a temple, where are we to worship? Now, another point with 490 is to consider this. But we're going to address this first in a different manner. How many of us remember the import of July 27th of 1299? Let's look at this in a little bit of detail. Turn with me, please, to Revelation chapter 9. As we open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 9, we see the following. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. How important was this chapter in Millerite history? What did they glean from this chapter? Well, I mean, dealing with Islam, they they then could apply uh, the fifth and sixth trumpet and the woes that it contains um, to establish the year-day principle. Right. And the year-day principle was one of those situations that this Sunday pastor and Desmond Ford sought to set aside because they didn't believe that it could be properly supported. But without this, July 27, 1299 does not occur. Now, from this, during the Millerite history in 1838, a Millerite preacher, seven years after Father Miller had begun his ministration, comes out and states that Revelation 9.15, which reads, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. So we have here, one hour, one day, one month, one year. When we're looking at a year, how long is a prophetic year in Bible chronology? 360 days. 360 days. How long is a month in Bible chronology? 30 days. We have 30 days. A day is simple. An hour is 
is 15. So here, when we add these three up, we have 391 years, 15 days. Right? This was placed as occurring here first 1299 plus 5 months which is 150 years, right? 1299 plus 150 1299 plus 150 gives us 1449. Now, what was it that was so big about 1299? Wasn't that the year of the ascendancy of the Ottoman Empire? Tur Turkey still considers that July 27th, 1299 as the start of the Ottoman Empire. Right. So it's the ascendancy of the Ottoman Empire. It's when it came to prominence. Is that important for us to note? According here to the chart, the Mahometans, which we would call Islam, begin with the first woe, the second woe, and the third woe. <clears throat> it's been interesting. If you take these charts in and you present them before a kid, before a child, when they look at this, when they look at this, The comment is, when you ask them, what, what do you see right here? And usually the answer will be, what's well, a dude on a horse? What do you see here? Well, you see a guy on a horse. Well, if you see a guy on a horse here and you see a guy on a horse here, what's going to go along with this angel right here? Well, it's got to be a guy on a horse, right? What are they trying to show us? They're trying to show us the importance of Islam. Now, we have here in 1299 and in 1449 Bible prophecy being revealed to us. We just established that from 1449, we have a time period of 391 years, which, if we look at this correctly, would take us to 1840. And then, if we have... 391 years and 15 days from July 27th, that would bring us to what date? August 15th. Is it August 15th or is it August 11th? August 11th. Okay. What happened on August 11th, 1840? The powers of Europe came to the aid to keep the nations of Islam from destroying Turkey. How does Mrs. White describe this in the Great Controversy? 
What does she say about that, about that time period? Well, she says it's the, uh, the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Is it not a great impetus that allowed many to realize the correctness of the chronology of the Bible prophecies? Yes. So that many minds were opened. Many minds were able to see that chronology was and is correct. This was one of the things that opened up the minds of many through the world to the correctness of William Miller's message. Now, In 1299, Islam was on the ascendancy. What else can we say about Islam? Is it a true prophet? No. Is it a false prophet? Yes. Consider this. Seventeen eighty eight to seventeen eighty nine, the United States came and began to become a world power, just like Islam began to become a world power in twelve ninety nine. I'm trying to recall the date when the Department of State was... Yeah, so that's going to be in 17, uh, 1779. And it's going to be... So if you got 1798, it's 17, 1779. Should be a 1789. 1789? Is that, yeah, 1789. Okay. It's going to be July 27th, 17. State Department. That's it. Okay. So we have. It's in my charts. So we have July 27th, 1299. July 27th, 1789. Is that not a period of 490 years? So the false prophet has now been established. Four hundred and ninety years after the false prophet of Islam. So in what we've just addressed, we now have presented three examples of this with four hundred and ninety. Is there yet a fourth? Now, yeah, just to okay. add to that. Please. So, because um, we did this back in uh, 2018. So there was the 490 years of July 27th. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the State Department. Now, it's also connected to the Great Seal. The Great Seal was in 1782, seven years before that. Um, and then I have here... Uh, in 1785, a dollar sign. Right. And I believe that refers to uh, something to do with their their bank banking system in the United States. But I don't remember what it is. But, um, but the thing is you have the, the seven years there in that 490 just like you do uh, in um, the 70 weeks. That, that seven years. And it's from 1782 which is a symbol of July 18, 2020. 
Now, <clears throat> throughout this, as we are establishing all of these way marks, we are, what I'm attempting to show is that when there is a combination of symbols, that we are being told something almost like a flashing billboard. Look here, look here, look here. All of this is for us to be able to know that our Heavenly Father is giving us a message of the time that we are in. Now, I know that many of you do not have a Bible with the book of Maccabees in it. But now we're going to return to this symbol here. We've established that we can trust the 2300 evening morning prophecy because it is the vision that is true. We have been establishing that 490 is something that we need to understand. We've just established here 490, 490, 490 over and over again. Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 8 verse 1. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of amity, make a league of friendship with all that came on to them. Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 8.17 in consideration of these things, Judas chose Epholemius, the son of John, the son of Achos, and Jason, the son of Eleazar, and sent them to Rome to make a league of amity and confederacy with them. 1 Maccabees 8.29 According to these articles, did the Romans make a covenant with the people of the Jews. Now, it's important for us to note that this covenant was made with Israel. Now, let's read a few Bible verses. If you would, please open your Bible. We're going to look at Exodus 23, 32. Exodus 23, 32. What's important about Exodus 23? It's the covenant that God gave with the children of Israel. Exodus 22, 23, 32, and 33. Thou shalt make no covenant with them or with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. The first day, God is saying, make no league with the nations around you. Just as he said, the first day you will allow the land to rest. Now let's take a look at Exodus 34.12 to 15. Or excuse me, 34.12 to 16. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods. 
and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. How important is this for us to note? Are we supposed to make a league, a covenant with others that are not of faith? That are not choosing to follow according to what God has written? Joshua chapter 9, verse 9. Is that not a doubling? Is that not something that we should see specifically for us today as a representation of the second angel's message? And this verse reads as follows. And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. What's happening here? the Gibeonites are seeking to make a league with Israel. Joshua 9.14 Joshua 9.14 to 18 And the men took of their victuals, they took of their food, and asked not counsel of the mouth of the Lord. What a mistake was this. They did not seek the word of the Lord. They did not in prayer and supplication ask, Father, is this what we are to do? Hmm? Yeah, okay. All right. Is it established that we are not to make a league? Okay. I'm going to present something very quickly for your consideration. And I'm going to leave this thought with you today. Using the Gregorian calendar... On the 25th of August, 1534, the Jesuit order was founded. Now it's interesting to me because from this year and we add 258, We come to 1792, which was the beginning of the French Republic. Now, it's interesting to me further that in 1582, many years after this, Pope Gregory XIII proclaimed a change to the calendar. So consider this, brothers and sisters. Observe this. Do with this as you will. Using the Julian calendar, the Jesuit order was founded on the 15th day of August of 1534. They will celebrate... 490 years on the 15th day of August I don't see this as being much different than the 391 years and 15 days. We have seen 
that the church has made a league in accepting the teaching of spiritual formation. They, they are in league with the Jesuits. Are we in any way to be in league with any of the nations around us? No. Consider this as you participate the remainder of this day in the presentations that will be made. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings that you have provided. We thank you for your guidance, for your willingness to show that you do not wish any to be lost, that you would desire that all be saved. There will be those that are going to reject these messages, yet they are built upon a, a sure foundation and not one of sand. Direct us now, guide us, we ask. May your character be shown to all those with whom we come in contact the rest of this day. For this we pray and this we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.